Your daughter. <laughs> You're watching Steep in the Woods. I'm Josh. I'm Celia. And this is our daughter, Ivy. Here at Steep in the Woods, we are 100% off grid. We live on a 14 acre mountain top homestead nestled deep in the Appalachian Mountains of North Carolina. Here on Steep in the Woods, we do totally off grid on a shoestring budget. You'll see no fancy stuff here. It's just making do with what you have and what you can figure out. If you're new to the channel, a big warm welcome. If you're a tough old root, then welcome back. This is my Appalachian workshop here, wherein we will be, I will be doing all of my crafts for sale on the website. We just now got the website fixed. Uh, you know, do I look like the kind of guy that knows how websites work? No, we've had to learn. Um, but either way, on part one, we did clearing of the ground and preparing of it. Part two, we, we milled our posts out of uh, uh, trees. Part three, we assembled the deal. And now part four, we're going to construct the living roof. So step one is get you some bark. I got two really giant poplars here. I've been saving for a different craft, but the bark has to go regardless. So I'm going to try to cut all the way around these logs then split the top and peel off the bark in as big a pieces as I can manage. I'm not doing a bark roof. This is just a flat foundation to go under our tarp for our living roof. So it doesn't have to be any specific size or whatever. Uh, uh, it just needs to be flat enough to span the distance of at least two of our uh, roof runners. So I got a samurai saw from a viewer. Use him and just cut around the, the entire the entire log here. Without hurting without hurting the log too much. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna use these for a different a different project and I don't want there to be a ton of scratch marks on it. Now that I've made two cuts roughly three feet apart, I'm going to split down the top and hopefully using our axe, peel the bark off in as big a section as we, we can manage. It's an extremely tedious process. Now, there's one piece. It's not as big as I'm going for, but we will use them. There we go. That's kind of what we're uh, going going for here. You know, big enough to be worth carrying over to the workshop, but 
not not so big as it's, it's a big deal to do. There we go. That's another one. Now granted, if you were gonna make bark shingles, this would be the perfect size. Um, as much as I love that idea, I don't wanna do that. I don't, want, uh, I don't want that much relying on how good I am at making some kind of a shingle out of a bark here. So, this is just gonna be the base for our living roof. We'll put it uh, bark side down so we have something pretty to look at. And then this will be the top of our workshop right here with the inside. It works. Not, not necessarily in love with the process, but you know, hell, it works. Why, heck yeah. Now if they all came off like this. Come on. We'd be in business. <laughs> oh. Well, that's a big old piece there. I think this is how it's supposed to work out. I think that's how, you know, in theory, uh, a man had practice at it and actually knew what he was doing. This is probably how it always works. Yeah, I like that. That is a good size. So I've climbed up here on the deal. We're giving it a test. Appears to be solid enough for one dude. I'm just continuing to put the bark on. I'm putting pretty side down so I could see it. And uh, hey, it doesn't really matter. Uh, if you're doing shingles, make them like shingles. But this is just to be flat boards for the roof so that our tarp doesn't sag between these runners. So. Hey, a pocket of nails, a hammer, and a bunch of, you know, manky old bark here, and get to working. Ah, it's like 
shimmying across soap or something. It's really slick. Slick. That is the last piece of bark. So now that bit of the project is over. Uh, I wasn't super picky with it, but it didn't have to be because it's not serving a, a, a super crucial purpose here. Give me something nice to look at on the inside of the workshop. Give it that, that Appalachian feel and span the distances between these posts so our heavy duty awesome tarp that was donated to the project doesn't sag down in the middle. The next step is just throwing that tarp on and uh, for the time being, I'm going to staple it. However, somewhere around here, can't seem to find them right now, uh, is some of them roofing nails with the big, like, green disc on them. That will be how we officially secure it once those securement method is uh, located. So, yeah. This has got to be the heaviest duty dang tarp I've ever had the privilege to lay my hands on. It is truly a quality item. Uh, so obviously the goal is to spread this sucker out over our roof and then staple it down. Yeah, that went almost nowhere. I can tell it's going to be a nightmare. All right, we'll pull it back in, I guess. Yeah, I could use some help. Unless I had a tarp on my hand. Yeah. All right, now we just make it square, line it up, and we're ready to staple it down. Oh. So you scared the crap out of me. That was. Well, maybe it was funny, but wasn't so sure of that in a moment. Well, that's a... Because the bark is not even, uh, this line will also not be perfectly even and straight. Don't worry about it. Uh, that's what trim is for. You know, trim this out. You never even know that there's a tarp on it. Unless you have internet, I guess. So the next step is to throw a bunch of debris on it um, and a little bit of dirt to give it sort of a foundation. Uh, once this is done, all you really need to do is once a year throw a bale of straw on it. And that'll be it. Once you get, see the, the thing that I'm lacking at this point 
is trim to go on the front and the sides and whatnot. Uh, probably just some, some of that slag off of like uh, when we make posts. Something just to cover up this bit of the tarp so that UV doesn't hit it. Honestly, in this spot with all of these trees, this tarp, as far as the UV goes, will probably be good for years. Years and years, because it just don't get any sun here. How, however, uh, I do want this thing to look sharp, and it will by the time that we're done. One of the good things about a living roof is it makes the cleanup around here real easy. Just throw that stuff on. Like I say, this is just a foundation. This is this is creating uh, peaks and valleys for uh, material to settle. Um, whereas if you just threw stuff right on it and the wind blew, it might blow all your leaves or hay or whatever off. So I'm putting this down first to kind of anchor it and give it a foundation to grow in. Plus, over time, this will be fertilizer for whatever you know plants end up growing on it. Here with all the trees, it'll probably be moss. But moss needs, uh, you know, moss needs food to live too. Someone asked why uh, the posts are so short. It's just the illusion of them looking short because the dirt inside of the workshop is mounded up. So we're going to remove some of this to throw on the roof and then the rest of it will just be removed all together giving us that needed head height that it appears to be lacking. Come on. Put that dirt, man. So far we've put down sticks, dirt, now we're putting leaves, we even got some green ones to give it that green roof look. Um, and that's basically it, you know, it's a lasagna roof here, you know, hey, structure, bark, tarp, sticks, dirt, leaves, other leaves, and then, uh, uh, you know, the only maintenance that this roof takes is occasionally putting more uh, uh, leaves or whatever on it. I think the best thing for a man to do um, if you didn't have access to all of this, it's just to use straw. Straw is your best friend with covering up, you know, your natural roof here.
That's my daughter. So that is your basic green or living roof on your Appalachian workshop here. It's just a matter of putting down that waterproofing uh, material. In this case, it was a tarp. And then adding organic matter to the top of it to help protect it from UV as well as add mass for its insulating qualities. There are a few loose ends we have to tie up, such as putting them nails with them big green button caps on them, along with these here staples. And I'm going to add trim to all four sides to protect this overhang from UV damage. As well as the need to keep adding organic material to it. It's very similar to a thatch type of roof. Over time, you'll have, to, you'll have to add material to it. But either way, I hope you liked what you saw. If you did, hit that button. If you're new to the channel, hit that other button. If you want to help support the project, there are links below. Until next time here, Steve in the Woods. By the way, we made our first sale. I'm hiking out to go deliver it and check the mailbox. Pallet cabin's still there, rocking and rolling. It ain't rotted away, no matter what people want to say about it. Uh, built it to last. What can I say?